Ten Hustlers is the website. You want t-shirts and hoodies? I thought you might. Forget the mall, I have it all here. I got all kind of colors to match your gear. Cream team, about to get that bread. Get rich and die trying, like 50 said. The money bag, make it look real fly. Get it at the website, we on Shopify. We even got a game, a hustler's dream. When you go around the board, you collect your cream. This cash money got me stuntin' like baby. You can play against your boys or against your lady. Hip hop hustles is the name of the novel. Street King puts a thug life, hip hop Bible. Street King puts us here, and we ain't leaving. No need to waste your time, even compete. Street King Pins Hustles.com. T shirts, hoodies, hats, coming soon, novels and games. Street King Pins, we bought that money bag. Get it, get it, get it. Welcome to Street King Pen Stories. This show is about Michael Hario Harris. He's a South Central LA Street Kingpin. He was born on September 20th, 1960, and lived on West 46th Street, a neighborhood they called Low Bottoms. Michael and his brother David was raised by his mother, Regina, in a single parent home. Michael, as a child, was a fast learner and very intelligent. In high school, he played the piano, drums, and trombone. Then he attended Los Angeles Community College where he was involved in several plays and script writing. He enjoyed acting. Just like a lot of young men around this time, crack cocaine and gang culture had infested the black community and it was very lucrative to sell drugs. Michael got affiliated with the Bounty Hunter Bloods. He stopped going to school and at the age of 20, he decided to sell crack cocaine. He picked up the name Harry O. Some people called him the Godfather because he became a notorious major player and drug trafficker. Working with his little brother David, they conquered the L.A. market. In the 80s, Harayo built an organization that expanded and distributed cocaine. He connected to Colombian supplies that he'd get pounds of cocaine from that he would distribute in California, Arizona, Texas, Michigan, Florida, and New York. By the age of 26, Harry O. had become one of the biggest drug traffickers at the time in the United States. Harry O wasn't your average street kingpin. He was a businessman. He wanted at some point to get out of the game and go legit. So he invested his money in legitimate business ventures. He knew how to move from drug deals with gang members to meetings with professional businessmen. He invested in real estate, construction company, hair salon, an exotic car dealership, and he owned a 20-car fleet limousine service. He also produced a play called Stepping Into Tomorrow, which starred the daughters of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Harry Belafonte, and Sidney Poitier. He became the first African American to produce a Broadway play. It was called Checkmates. It was new actor Denzel Washington's Broadway debut. But after five years at the top of his game, it came crashing down to an end. In 1987, he was arrested and charged with kidnapping and conspiracy to commit murder. He was also indicted by the feds in a six-man indictment, and two of the other men was Waterhead Bo Bennett, and Rafael Edmonds. They were convicted by a federal jury of operating an international drug ring that the feds say distributed tons of cocaine. Using the Federal Asset Forfeiture Act of 1984, they seized seven million dollars from a residence. Another raid, they seized 500 kilos of cocaine. They seized 32 million dollars worth of Harayo's assets, including two houses and five exotic luxury cars. On August 26, 1988, the DA sees Harayo's hilltop mansion that was worth $1.1 million located in Fernando Valley. Michael Harris was sentenced to 25 years to life. Then four years into his bid, he heard about a new label that was ringing in the streets and the prisons. The label was called Death Row Records. Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, and the DOC lacked the big money needed to fund a successful record label. Being the businessman, entrepreneur, and investor he was, wanted to invest in death row. I think I know what y'all might be thinking, like, didn't you say the Fed seized the houses, cars, money, and businesses? Yeah, you heard me right. I said it. You see, a large portion of his fortune that was proven to be completely legal and was not earned with drug money or money laundering, Harry Yo got to the bag illegally and legally. This tell you what level he was on. He was like BMF before Big Meech did his thing. You already know, this game, when somebody goes down, there's opportunity for someone else to come up. Harry Yo was incarcerated, locked down, so he was going to get back up. Like Booker T. Washington said, you can't hold a man down without staying down with him. So in 1991, 
he told his lawyer David Kenner to contact Suge Knight. Kenner then brought Suge to meet Hario in prison. They made a deal. Hario set up a company called Godfather Entertainment that would serve as a parent company to Death Row. Hario invested $1.5 million to the Death Row label in exchange for 50% of the company. He did it like that because California law prohibits anyone in prison from running a company. So only Suge Knight's name would be on the paperwork. Michael Harris became a silent partner and he got married while he was locked up in prison. So to protect his investment, he made his wife, Lydia Harris, CEO of Godfather Entertainment and a huge part of the entire arrangement. So Kenner became the lawyer for Godfather Entertainment and Death Row. The first record was a huge success, Dr. Dre's The Chronic. A lot more was released after that, Snoop Dogg, The D.O.C., Tupac, just to name a few. Death Row Records sold almost 18 million records. That's worth $325 million. Suge Knight and Michael Harris' friendship changed when Mr. Harris warned Mr. Knight about the dangers in mixing gang activity with the business. But Suge didn't listen and ghosted Michael, and Michael and Lydia never got any royalty money or profits. David Kenner ghosted him too. He wasn't helping with his case about his parole or the Death Row situation. Kenner became the exclusive defense attorney for Suge Knight and Death Row Records, and they cut him out the picture. In 1996, Mr. Harris issued a letter to Death Row distributor Interscope Records threatening a lawsuit if he was not compensated for his $1.5 million investment. Interscope avoided the lawsuit and settled. Lydia Harris received $300,000. Then Suge Knight got bagged and sentenced to nine years in prison, and the FBI began looking into the rumors that they were linked to the street gangs, drug trafficking, and money laundering. The FBI even went to see Michael in prison to offer him a deal to testify against Suge Knight that he was operating a criminal enterprise for exchange for an early release. Mr. Harris declined and told them, I would rather die than snitch. While Suge and Michael was locked up, the death row money was piling up. Suge Knight and David Kenner publicly denied that Harryo gave them any startup money. Even though Kenner previously mentioned Harryo on a TV interview when death row started. In 2002, Lydia Harris filed a lawsuit against death row. Even though Interscope gave them $300,000, death row owed them millions in profits and royalties. Miss Harris won the lawsuit and in 2005 the case was settled. Harryo had already spent at, at that time 17 years in prison and his appeal for early release was denied. The Harris's was awarded $107 million in a civil court judgment filed by Lydia Harris. Later that year they got divorced but they arranged to split the money that they had won but in 2006 Death Row Records could not pay the money. So they filed for bankruptcy. Death Row was auctioned off for $24 million. Since then, Michael and Lydia has only received $1 million from the award. It's unlikely that they will ever get all the money that's owed to them. In 2021, in a surprise pardon by then-President Donald Trump, Mr. Harris was granted his freedom after spending 33 years behind bars. Michael says he's a changed man. Over 30 years ago, I was part of the problem. However, over the years, I have repeatedly proven myself to be a part of the solution. This situation with Death Row has made me somewhat of a celebrity, and now I have the opportunity to use this platform to give back. He plans to give the wisdom back to the streets so he can share what he's learned to help heal broken communities. He's also picking up where he left off. He's partnered with rap icon and mogul Snoop Dogg as the COO of the all-new Death Row together building up the brand to give young voices a platform to share their stories. He also launched film studios and building a network called Philanthropy TV to shine light on the stories of extraordinary people giving back. And to him, this is a chance to right the wrongs he's committed in the past and a chance at redemption. Damn, what a story. Street Kingpins doesn't condone drug dealing, crime, or violence. This lifestyle usually ends with prison or death. You can love the streets, just remember, the streets don't love you back. Like, subscribe, and comment. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Thanks for watching. Peace. <laughs>